Concentric zone model was created by Ernest Burgess in 1925. This Chicago school urban land use model was based off the 1925 metropolis. The model assumes that a city is laid out on an isotropic plane or flat. It must be clear that this is not a model of all cities, but a model of the industrial city at the peak of the industrial city. The book called The City by Park Burgess and Mackenzie, 1925, contained this model and analyzed crime in the industrial city. The model is described like this. From a city's central business district, five rings called concentric zones are placed. For each individual city, these rings will vary dependent on the physical and urban geography of the city. Urban areas are characterized in terms of ethnic groupings, income levels, and types of commerce or industry. Residents of one zone migrate to other zones as their economic positions improve and new residents take their place. Zone 1, or the middle of the concentric circle, is the central business district. This is the downtown of a 1925 city. Skyscrapers, high-rises, tenement buildings. There's varying violent crime, and there's also white-collar crime, because this is where the business folk come down to do their business. Zone 2 is the zone in transition. There's factories, warehouses, wholesaling, deteriorating homes, high crime, tenement buildings. Zone 2 supports Zone 1. All the services in Zone 2 will support the growth of Zone 1. Zone 3 is the zone of the working class homes. Low class residential, working class homes, there's medium crime. So there's less crime, a little bit nicer houses. These people were able to escape out of Zone 2 and move into Zone 3, a little bit nicer of an area, but they're still supporting the factories and the steel mills and all the warehousing that occurs in Zone 2 or even the white-collar businesses in Zone 1. Zone 4 is the zone of better residences. There's middle-class residential homes, newer homes being built, lower crime. Zone 5 is the commuter zone or the suburbs. This has the lowest crime. Residents here rely on the automobile, streetcar, or railroads to transport themselves into the central business district. Since zone five is way out there, there's going to be less crime because criminals cannot make it out there because they probably don't have the means to walk all the way or buy a rail ticket or a streetcar ticket, head all the way out to the commuter zone. So these people were able to escape the city and the city's crime and to live in the earliest suburbs. So the concentric zone theory in criminology basically says, well, downtowns weren't that bad, but right outside of downtown was a bunch of slums and factories, so the crime was really bad there. But once you started moving further and further away from the city, Zone 3, Zone 4, Zone 5, crime kept going down. That's all it means. Now the cities of today are completely changed. They've been gentrified. People don't shop downtown unless it's a huge city like New York City or Chicago. Downtowns are dead. People just come in to work, and then they instantly leave, and they head back to the suburbs. But there's also poor people that were never able to leave the city. Uh, entire generations who grew up in the city and could never leave. Some of these were working class people from back in the day that are still in the zone of transition, which there are usually uh, still poorer neighborhoods right outside of the downtown central business districts of most cities. And uh, they're sad to see. And hopefully those people one day will strive to be able to get to a nicer area of town. But this theory, this concentric zone model does not work today. Uh, cities are changing rapidly, and this was just an old-time theory and a model. Uh, back in the day, criminology was still developing, and this was one of the early models.